Welcome to the Payoff Pitch Prospect Report, and I'm Paul Valley. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a new Orioles number one prospect, and that is Grayson Rodriguez, as he has leapfrogged up that top prospects board. He's now baseball's number 54 overall prospect, sitting behind him just two slots lower at number 56, Ryan Mountcastle. D.L. Hall, the number 67 overall prospect, and then Yasniel Diaz coming in at number 91. So that's the Orioles' top four. So until Adley Rutschman uh, joins the fold later this summer, Grayson Rodriguez, Orioles' new number one top prospect. And it's fitting that the number one prospect in the organization started the South Atlantic League All-Star game last year when an inning gave up a, gave up a hit, no runs. In fact, he, Drew Rahm, and Zach Madsen combined for three scoreless innings, allowing just that one hit and one walk. Ofelki Peralta, another all-star pitcher for the Delmarva Shorebirds, didn't fare as well, allowing a home run and the only two runs that were given up by the North squad in that game last night. Uh, Doran Turchin had the game-winning bases-clearing double to break a 2-2 tie in the eighth inning. It was all part of a five-run eighth inning for the North team. And the three RBIs led the North team to, a, to the lead for good and gave them that win 6-2. Daniel Fajardo, the backup catcher, he was one-for-one one in his lone plate appearance. So Delmarva Shorebirds faring very nicely in that All-Star game last night. Moving forward up to the next level of the minor leagues, well, two levels up really, you're going to look at Bowie, and they have a trio of left-handed pitchers that are pitching really well for the Bay Sox this year. We're not really going to talk about Zach Lowther because we've talked about him so much this year. We're going to put the limelight on some other players this week. Alex Wells out of Australia, he just turned 22 years old in February, 4-1 and one with a 192 ERA and 10 starts for the Bowie Bay Sox. He has just, he, in his first two seasons of professional baseball, he allowed just 19 walks in 202 combined innings, and he's averaged one and a half walks per nine innings for his career. So really good control guy. He's got a 265 ERA in 72 minor league games, 6.9 Ks per nine innings for his career. So he's not a strikeout guy. This is a guy who sits in the 88 to 91 mile an hour range with his fastball, but he's crafty. He will never throw the same pitch twice. And in concession, and in succession, excuse me. And he's a guy who just knows how to pitch. He knows how to paint the corners and hits his spot. If he gives up a base hit to somebody, you can bet that they're not going to see that same pitch in the next at bat. Something I've read in a scouting report anyway. So Alex Wells continuing his success. Uh, went 11 and five a couple of years ago with about a 2.35 ERA. Uh, that went up to about three and a half last year, but still pitched very well in the minors last year. This is a guy who we could see as a fringe fifth starter, maybe a swing man in the bullpen, but somebody who is definitely garnering some attention out of the Bowie Bay Sox rotation. Another guy that I'm excited to talk about out of that rotation, Bruce Zimmerman. And this is a local kid. This is a guy who pitched two years uh, for Towson University. Then he went to... Uh, Mount Olive College was Division II college. He got drafted in the fifth round by the Braves. Came over in that trade with, uh, for Kevin Gossman and Darren O'Day last year. Uh, he's 2-1, 249 ERA in 12 starts. Ironically enough, he struggled in his two years at Towson, but then went over and pitched to a sub-3-2 ERA in his two seasons with Mount Olive, which prompted him to be drafted in the fifth round by the Braves. Averaging 9.5 strikeouts per nine innings for his career, three walks per nine innings. So you want to see the walks come down. Uh, but he's a, he's a left-handed guy, Fa fastball touches 93, but sits around 91, has a really clean and easy delivery, and is, you know, projectable, could be a bottom-of-the-rotation guy, we'll see. He's not somebody that many people talk about, but he's had a really nice season for Bowie, and he's had a nice career to start his minor league uh, uh, career. So somebody to really keep an eye on, somebody to get excited about, because he's a local guy, and we love local guys here in Baltimore. Uh, and then... Lastly, but certainly not least, we're going to talk about Yasniel Diaz. Uh, we talked about him on the payoff pitch a little bit earlier today, and we talked about how he was just named the, um, the minor league player of the week in that league. He hit 364, two doubles, three home runs, 12 RBIs, seven runs scored with four walks, and an 864 slugging percentage in six games. For the year, he's in 248 with four home runs and 22 RBIs. He missed about a month with a hamstring injury. He was sidelined on um, April 25th, came back about two and a half, three weeks ago. Uh, so he's only played in 37 games. He was the Orioles' top prospect at one point. Now he's a number four prospect. But he's starting to swing the bat a lot better. 
And hopefully this is somebody that the Orioles could maybe see in September, or he could be auditioning to be their a starting corner outfielder for them next year. Either way, nice to see a guy who's hitting in the low 220s about a week and a half ago, get that batting average up around the 250 mark, start swinging a better bat and becoming the player that we envisioned him being when the Orioles traded for him in that Manny Machado trade. So Justin Neal Diaz swinging a lot better bat, getting rewarded for it. Hopefully we'll see him sooner than later. Uh, that's going to do it for the uh, Payoff Pitch Prospect Report. Once again, I'm Paul Valley. Thanks for joining me, and always, as always, go O's.